Is it Christmas already? Because it feels like it's Christmas already. Hello tarantula lovers, I'm Alex and you're watching Tarantula Haven. Yes, I've got a couple of brand new enclosures from Tarantula Cribs. No, this is not a paid advertisement. They sent them to me just because. But I love these enclosures so much that I can't help but do a video on them anyway. Not to mention, I fully support them. I think that they're great. I think that they're very, very sturdy and well made. And sometimes people complain that they might be a little bit pricey, but it's kind of a case of you get what you pay for. Um, the acrylic on these is very clear and very thick and just the magnetic lids on them are another cool feature. So there's a lot going Going for these enclosures and in my opinion they're well worth the money. I did see something on a Facebook group about a similar enclosure that is made by Zilla I believe and this is something that they had to deal with. And in my opinion, if you have to rig your enclosure to make it close right after you've purchased it and put it together the way it should be, then you've got a problem and you didn't get what you paid for. You don't have to worry about that with these enclosures because they have a nice lighting mechanism that, that opens and closes right here. And then of course you've got the magnets that secure it in place. So you don't have to worry about anything sliding out and uh, possibly getting escapes. So these are really cool enclosures closures. Anyway, I posted these on Instagram and I kind of gave a little sneak preview as to what I had here. In this enclosure, I kind of got it a little bit deserty. Um, I've got some substrate on it. I'm keeping it relatively dry, although I did wet it down toward the bottom so that this uh, species can burrow because it does have a tendency to want to burrow a little bit, not a whole lot. So I put a rock in here. I'm assuming it's probably going to try to burrow by the rock or something like that. A little water dish and I put a little cactus decoration but I kept it minimalistic um, this particular species probably won't be knocking anything over because somebody did say I bet you it's going to be buried or knocked over in, in no time at all um, but that's probably not going to be the case yes it may get a little bit buried but it's nothing I can't handle because once it digs its burrow it's probably going to dig not going to dig much more so then I can just unbury it and replace the cactus on there and make it look good again after that it probably won't do a whole lot more decorating of its enclosure and it's not a real heavy webber this enclosure over here, I took a little bit more of a minimalistic approach. I put some rocks in there and I put the skull in there. So I have officially joined the skull gang. And the reason for that is because this species that's going to go over here is a very heavy Weber and it is an old world tarantula. So I wanted to give it kind of a creepy vibe and uh, hopefully she will decorate it with her webbing all over and make it look even better. But, you know, who knows? She may end up webbing it so much that you won't be able to see anything so if that's the case then you know I'll deal with it maybe I'll redo the enclosure or something so we got two rehousings to do so let's go ahead and get on with that This is Brachypelma emilia, commonly known as the Mexican red leg. They come to us from the western coast of Mexico, very similar to Brachypelma smithy and Brachypelma hamori. I took a chance on this little one um, when I ordered something, and I don't remember where I ordered from, but I had a little bit of extra money left, so I decided to pick it up. And uh, I normally pick up multiples in an attempt to get a female, so. 
I was hoping I would get a female, but I wasn't really sure. Of course, the chances were 50-50. And for the longest time, I thought this was a male because I would look and I would try to sex the molts. And for the longest time, I couldn't see anything. So I figured this was a male and I was a little bit disheartened because I do love this species. I want to see it get big and bulky like they usually do. But it wasn't until I think this last molt, I used the microscope and I looked and I was so happy to see the spermatheca there. They were tiny, but they were there and I confirmed this as a female. So yes, this is a little girl and I was so happy to have her. This species is very docile and I've never seen a threat posture or anything like that from her. Although she can kick hairs as you saw when I was putting her in the catch cup. Mine can be a little bit shy and they do burrow a little bit and um, she'll quickly scurry under that burrow if she feels threatened. But she doesn't dig a whole lot, but of course she doesn't really have a whole lot of room in this little tub that I had her in, which is why I'm putting her in the larger enclosure and I'm giving her more substrate just to see what she'll do. She can be a little bit food aggressive. If you watch my last feeding video, she actually jumps at the tongs and then quickly scurries underneath her cork bark when she realizes it wasn't a roach. She's recently molted, which you can tell by her bright coloration and she should be hungry, but she's in a new environment and probably a little bit stressed, which is probably why she's not eating for me. This is Harpactera pulchropis, commonly known as the golden blue leg baboon. And these come from Southern Africa and they are not as high strung as many baboon species. This was a dream tarantula of mine and a subscriber made that dream reality for me when he offered to buy one for me in exchange for babysitting his tarantulas while he was away on a trip. So I was extremely happy to get one. And of course I only got the one and as typical with me, I usually buy multiples of slings. So um, I was really, really hoping that this would turn out female. Early on, I started getting the feeling that this was a male because um, when it molts, their colors get really, really dark. And um, it just, I just felt like it was a male and I would check the molts to see if it was female. And of course it's difficult to see when they're younger. So I was kind of checking for no reason at all. And it wasn't until later on that she got a little bit of size on her and I did see the spermatheca and they are very tiny as well. So um, it was difficult to see. And once she got some size on her, then it was possible to see them. So again, I was elated to find out that this was a female, especially with just a single species. So I look forward to having her for a while and I look forward to breeding her because this is a beautiful, beautiful species. Right now she is due for a molt and her colors are very dull, but when she molts, she's gonna be a golden color and those blues are gonna be really, really striking. This video really doesn't do it justice because she is so dull right now. And she wasn't very hungry because of course she is due for a molt, but that didn't stop her from trying. They are magnificent Webbers, and I can't wait to see what she does with this enclosure with the skull and everything. I'm kind of hoping that she uses one of the eye sockets as a, a hide, but they do what they're gonna do. And I can hope all I want, but they're gonna, she's gonna start one wherever she wants to. I used a soil substrate mixture and excavator clay so that she would have a nice solid surface for her to burrow in and those burrows would be nice and secure and not collapse on themselves.
So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, two super duper easy rehousings. One new world, one old world. The Brachypelma Amelia is not a defensive species, but they can be a little bit nervous. This one is a little bit nervous, but um, she did really well. She was really docile and just kind of moved around very slowly. In fact, she didn't really move at all. She hasn't moved much from where she is right now. And um, But she gets going and she'll move around. And once she gets comfortable, she'll eat. And she just recently molted, so she should be eating, but I'm sure it's because she's in a new environment and a little bit stressed out. So um, I'll probably have her eat later on and see what she does. Now the Harpectera poker piece, she can be a little bit defensive when she wants to. When she was younger, she was a lot more defensive. When she was just a tiny sling, I hardly ever saw her. She would burrow and she made herself a nice little web funnel and she would spend all her time down there and I would only see feet. So I was so excited when she started emerging and coming out and uh, being on display a lot more often. Now she's out all the time and on display and is just a gorgeous creature. Um, I imagine, what I'm imagining is hopefully she'll probably make one of the eye holes her, her burrow and she'll go down in there. The, the skull is hollow in the back so she can actually burrow down pretty deep on there. Um, but they're going to do what they're going to do. So I, I can hope that that's what she's going to do, but she'll probably make a burrow somewhere else. And uh, she will web up everything in here. And I just love this species. If you are to get a baboon species, this is probably the one that I would recommend the most because she is pretty cool as far as she's really chill. She's not bolty or anything like that. And she can be defensive, but for the most part, she's not. And like I said, as she got older, she got a little bit more chilled out. And uh, thank you so much, Brian, for buying this for me. This is just like the gift that keeps on giving. Every time I see her, it just, you know, I just get overjoyed all over again because she's so special to me. So, um, you know, that is one of the coolest gifts that I've ever received for, you know, babysitting tarantulas. <laughs> so that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed it. Next week, weather permitting, I should be getting in some new critters. And one of them is something that I've been wanting for a long time and I've never had in the Tarantula Haven. So that's something to look forward to. Hopefully I will get them in if the weather, if the temperatures are good. If not, then they'll probably have to wait till the week after. But that was cool that I got these in because now I've got new material coming up for the next week. Before I go, I'd like to give a huge thank you to Tarantula Cribs for the enclosures. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I think they're the best. And if you would like to get your own Tarantula Cribs, I do have a link down below in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. If you want to support this channel, I have a Teespring store where I sell Tarantula Haven merchandise. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters and special thank you to my newest Patreon supporter, Daniel Gonzalez. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your support. If you want to become a Patreon supporter, there is a link down below in the description as well. And that's it for me today. Until next time, keep loving them tarantulas. <laughs>